This is the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric reporting tonight from Cairo. Good evening, everyone. This ancient city is the epicenter of an uprising by the people of this country who say now is the time for a new Egypt. And when the man many believe represents the old Egypt finally spoke to the people today, it only stoked the fires of rage and resentment. We are staying here for one week, two weeks, one month, one year. We won't leave. Tonight on state television, President Hosni Mubarak announced he will not seek re-election, effectively ending his 30-year rule of Egypt. In a defiant address to the nation, he said he wanted to restore stability and help with a peaceful transition of power. He's also asking Parliament to speed up the elections, now scheduled for September. His message watched by a massive crowd in Cairo's Liberation Square. It's not enough. He, he, should, he should take it all the way. He has to get out of here. We really need this transitional phase because if he left us today, what will we do tomorrow? We don't have food. We don't have anything. The atmosphere here is like a turbocharged street festival, a somewhat raucous display of civilized disobedience. And even though the government has shut down the subway, commuter trains, and the Internet, that has not stopped hundreds of thousands of people from pouring in to the heart of Cairo. We are not terrorists. We are civilized. We, we never spoke before because we never had a chance to speak up what we really believe. There will be another president take this country. We will say no for uh, war between Egypt and Israel. President Mubarak survived multiple assassination attempts. But it appears tonight a relatively peaceful uprising that had been simmering for decades was his political undoing. And as unrest continues to spread across the Arab world, a major shakeup in Jordan, just 300 miles from Cairo. King Abdullah II fired his nation's government and appointed a new prime minister who will select a new cabinet. The preemptive move a response to large protests in the streets of another moderate Arab nation. In Cairo, a mass exodus of foreigners, including thousands of Americans, anxious to leave the country, ending up in airports from Athens to Frankfurt. It was chaos and very unpleasant. But that didn't stop some Egyptian nationals like Karim, a financial planner who lives in Switzerland, from coming to Cairo to take part in the most historic moment Egypt has seen in his lifetime. There is no change without a cost with it. That's the cost that we're paying right now. But I would rather that we start reform as of today than just uh, wait for another 30 years to get the new president. The opposition here in Egypt is made up of many factions and many different viewpoints. But they all share one common goal, removing Hosni Mubarak from power. Elizabeth Palmer has that part of the story. As these protests have grown bigger, they've grown broader, touching the hopes and dreams of all Egyptians. <laughs> Enough, she says. It's our right to have change. It's our right to have something new. All Egyptian people not like you. Please, Ms. Mubarak, can you go out? Opposition politicians were in the thick of it, too. Dr. Osama Ghazali Harb is the head of the Liberal Democratic Front Party. For the first time in Egyptian history, from Pharaoh till now, Egypt had a genuine revolution. Every religious and political affiliation in Egypt is represented in this crowd tonight. Now, they're not all natural allies, of course, but in this extraordinary moment, they are united in a common cause. Earlier today, thousands of supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood swelled the ranks of the protests. It's a banned Islamic political party whose fundamentalist agenda makes the U.S. and the West nervous. But Dr. Rashad Al-Bayoumi, deputy director of the Brotherhood, says all they and the secular opposition want is democracy. Our youth are willing to die for it, he says, and we'll stand our ground until our demands are met. Those demands were spelled out today after an unprecedented joint meeting of all opposition groups. They insist Mubarak must step down and leave the country. And then they want a broad coalition to lead a transitional government. 
new elections, a new constitution, and the dissolution of parliament. Mohammed al Baradai, Egypt's elegant career diplomat, is a strong candidate to smooth the way through what are sure to be difficult negotiations. Today, he said his goal would be to build a new Egypt on the basis of stability and freedom. It's exactly the kind of fresh chapter this crowd is demanding, but hardly dared believe possible. We're going to make our own history. The opposition was blindsided by the president's announcement tonight. They really did think he was going to resign. One opposition leader told CBS News this was a maneuver, not a reaction to a revolution. Katie? Meanwhile, Liz, has anyone emerged as the opposition leader? Not yet, and the key thing to watch tomorrow is whether they stay united or whether some break away and say, look, let's accept this, what essentially is a half measure for the sake of peace. All right, Liz Palmer, Liz, thank you so much. Now, this massive rally that's taking place in Liberation Square never could have happened without the implicit blessing of Egypt's military. And as Mark Strassman reports, many people who were moved to participate never imagined themselves as revolutionaries. They're hoping to rewrite Egyptian history. Revolutionaries like the three Nagib sisters. Why is today different? Because um, now we're never. It's now we're never. Now we're never. We have to stand up. Stand up and be counted in Liberation Square's mass rally. Layla Nagib, now 23, says crowd size matters. Morally, it matters. Yeah, the more the more people in the streets, the more we feel like this is going to be something. More it's going to come and the results going to come By and large, the faces of this revolt are political and religious moderates, not professional protesters, but in many cases educated, secular, first-time activists. Fed up, but fired up too. Ibrahim Suleiman and Sharif Muradif. Different generations, same dream. An end to what Muradif calls living in darkness. We don't care who is going to be the next president, as long as it's going to be democracy. Did you ever think in your lifetime you would see this? No. This is the first revolution in the whole history of Egypt. I'm, I'm happy that I live till I see it. They're trying to oust a dictatorial president with persistent but peaceful protest. Part of what has made this such a reasonable revolt is Egypt's army. First, they promised no rough stuff, then provided a safe space for this revolt to happen. As the security here, soldiers have been calming, not controlling. Danny Kareed is 24 and jobless. You feel safe here? Yes, of course. Kareed feels less secure about his future the longer Mubarak stays. I want a job that uh, I can pay all the bills, I can have a good life, I can have a good apartment, uh, get married one day. The average dreams of average people. In Liberation Square, this is a revolt for hope. But even the moderates in this crowd seem in no mood to compromise. They want Mubarak gone, and they want it now. Kitty? Mark, are you surprised that while boisterous, a crowd of this size has been so well behaved? Well, keep in mind, these are by and large reasonable people, and they're relaxed people because the army has made it possible for them to feel safe as they protest. A new and exhilarating feeling to a lot of these folks. It's also a very well-organized crowd. I mean, without any central leadership, they have organized themselves to check IDs, to pick up trash around the area. This is a true grassroots protest, and it seems to have staying power. All right, Mark Strassman, Mark, thanks very much. As we have said, these protests are taking place all over the country, not just here in Cairo. Egypt is the size of Texas and New Mexico combined with a population of more than 80 million people. It's a poor country. About a fifth of Egyptians live on just $2 a day. Lara Logan is in Alexandria tonight, the ancient city on the Mediterranean coast and a stronghold of the Muslim Brotherhood. Mubarak, wake up, chanted the crowd. Thousands of voices rising up in this ancient city founded by Alexander the Great. Today, Alexandria is the stronghold of Egypt's extremist Muslim Brotherhood and scene of some of the largest and most violent demonstrations over the past week. 
But even here, this revolution belongs to the people, not to the Muslim Brotherhood. They are not the, 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 the most popular group, but they are the most organized one. And we are about to organize ourselves in order to face them in a fair and free elections. So please, don't say, we, we will not see a new Iran. Al Amir, a political science graduate working for the UN, was one of many professionals in the crowd. It was hard to imagine anyone could have silenced these people for so long. The government think that we will stop one day. We will never do that. We will stay. We prefer to die. Let me ask you a question. Will you accept anything from Mark? No, 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 no. Here amongst the crowd on the streets of Alexandria, you can feel the hatred for the Egyptian president. These people are not interested in compromise. They want Hosni Mubarak to step down. Suddenly, the protesters erupt. A rumor sweeps the crowd. Mubarak is gone. But it quickly dies, followed by disbelief that the president hasn't yielded to their will. Are people surprised that he's still there? Yes. They all ask him. Don't he have any dignity? What Egyptian people are saying, they don't want you. Why are you still here? There were clashes here tonight following President Mubarak's promise to leave office in September. Protesters we spoke to said it's not enough. They want him gone now, not months from now. And they called on Americans to support them. Lara Logan, CBS News, Alexandria, Egypt. Public comments from the Obama administration have been measured and diplomatic, but privately, the message to President Mubarak has been blunt and direct. Chip Reed is at the White House tonight. And Chip, what is the administration's main objective, and are they achieving it? Well, Katie, the number one objective is an order, orderly transition to a new and stable government. The last thing that the United States government wants is for the Egyptian government to descend into chaos. The fear is that that could lead either in the near future or down the road to some kind of radical Islamic government coming to power and that would be very bad news for the United States. It would also be very bad news for Israel and for the Middle East peace process. And don't forget, whoever controls Egypt also controls access to the Suez Canal and that is vitally important economically, not only to the United States, but to countries around the world. But one other thing, the objective of finding an Egyptian government that actually responds to and respects the rights of the Egyptian people is also something that White House advisors say is very important to this president. It is not just window dressing. It is something he believes in very strongly. Back to you, Katie. I'll be back with more from Cairo later in the broadcast, but now let's go to New York where Harry Smith has the rest of the day's news, including that latest storm that's pounding much of the country. Harry? That's right, Katie. A massive winter storm that's slamming the country from Colorado to Connecticut. We'll take a look next.